Hello, everybody, and welcome to Worlds Tonight, coming to you from, or this morning, coming to you from LA as the crew is picking up stakes in London and moving everything to Brussels. We've got a lot to cover because we had four days of big quarterfinal matchups, starting with Flash Wolves versus Origin. The 3 1 for Origin coming out on top, first European team of the tournament to move ahead. Probably the closest matchup that we had in the quarterfinals. Flash Wolves, really a team that we thought would bring a lot more to the table than, the, when the, than what they showed there because of their continual growth through the group stages. A little disappointed by that, but Origin with a really slow but solid play style just takes a 3-1. Yeah, methodical. I think that's what we'll say about Origin. And they had one X factor, and that was their AD carry, who went absolutely bonkers the entire series. So shout out to Niels. But on the side of Flash Wolves, you really have to look towards their mid laner of the person that did step up finally in this set. Maple was able to get a lot of good work done. Yeah, I want to go back to Niels, though. Absolute rock star for this team. You know, through and through, from day one, the rookie showing up big. And I do feel like he is the one person that they can consistently fall back on and, and be comfortable putting in a carry position because we saw a little bit of stumbling on that second half of the group stage. Yeah, I mean, he's really setting the bar high in terms of what we expect from a top-notch AD carry. Fantastic mechanics, CSing all around, great champion pool, and the team really is like, okay, well, if you're going to carry, okay, here we'll you go, that. go for it. We, like, <laughs> we'll just sit and watch. Yeah, 100%. And you know you have to give credit once again to Origin for throwing the whole team behind him the way they did in their games because you go one of two ways, right? You either say, we have to step up or we can just like ride this guy's coattails and they went with option number two. The thing that worries me was it was against NL. And NL is like, don't get me wrong, he's a very consistent AD carry, but he was a substitute coming into this tournament. Can he do it against Bang? Because Bang has been absolutely phenomenal throughout as well. Yeah, other concerns going forward then and have to stretch to the top lane. As we saw today in our series, there are some very strong top laners in this tournament. We have Marin uh, and Smeb as two of the big ones that Soaz might have to go up against. I think a matter of the top laner has come down to the champions and how the champion pools really affect the draft. So a lot of these teams, even though they have good matchups in the top lane, the pick just really shafts the entire draft. Makes no sense whatsoever. And what we find is that these high skill cap champions like the Fioras, the Rivens, are really easier to fit into a composition because of how many tools they have. The picks like Darius and Renekton are really kind of taking a step back just because of they're so inflexible in terms of what they can do to a team comp that it really just slows the whole thing down. Moving ahead to the next quarterfinal that we had, SKT versus AHQ. We set this one up as a David and Goliath, and it didn't turn out as David and Goliath because the Goliath won this time around. SKT just looked so clean in their victories in this series. Well, there's a reason we always quote David and Goliath because that's the only time the little dude actually won the fight. <laughs> Every other yeah. time, like, Goliath just destroys him. That's definitely what happened here. Once again, the shining star was probably the fact that Westor was able to go out with a bang, solo kill faker a couple of on times in the landing phase. On his birthday, in his retirement game. So huge props to that guy. He's been an absolute pleasure to watch throughout the years. But hey, HQ, there wasn't much more to say about that series. They got comprehensively like destroyed. I think the tough part going into it is that SKT didn't show much. They showed mm. pretty much what they showed in the group stage, and then they just flat out stomped AHQ. What's Origin going to prepare against this? They know they have very deep champion pools, but they haven't showed any of it yet. And then the other terrifying thing is the discussion we had on the day of where we kind of came to the realization that SKT drafts so well every single time, and so credit to the entire staff and Coma specifically, but the fact that they always draft within a theme, that, that you come out of the champion select, and even if the other team has a bunch of power picks, you're still saying, I understand perfectly what SKT is trying to do here. Yeah, and the other thing is they suit players to champions really well. Like, it's not only the champions they pick, it's like, I know what Faker is going to do at this point of the game with his pick. I know how Marin is going to play the lane on Renekton versus Darius, just because they pick like really good thematic champions about how SKT like to play the game. And the really scary fact about them is that this entire tournament in their, I think it's 9-0 run, they yep. haven't dropped a tier two tower at all. Yeah. You know how impressive that is against all these split pushes to not drop a tier to you? Oh, it is. Right, just... Even in lane swaps where sometimes yeah, you yeah. see a, like a just... second tier turret push, they still haven't lost one. Yeah, and the other thing is, and, and this is like my favorite quote is like, there is no Samsung White this year. No, there's not. <laughs> there's SKT and they're arguably like just as good if not better. They have this awesome lineup the whole way down once again. Now I got to push us ahead now to Fnatic versus EDG, a 3-0 series, but we have gone back and said that this was a closer 3-0 series than probably anyone in history. Yeah, and you know, realistically, maybe even a 3.50 if you look at the remade game where it looked like Fnatic was stalling out very well. And you see on the screen, 
the player of the series for Biven just oh, going absolutely bonkers. But this was a series that I think that we built up with great expectations and people are going to look at the 3-0 and be like, what a letdown. But when I watched that series, game one was like very close. Hooney went crazy in game two with great support. And then game three, it was like, once again, a very close game. So I think that it did live up to hype just in a three game match. I think a cool mm -hmm. thing about it too is that in the game that was remade, Fnatic was very willing to let Gangplank and Mordekaiser go through, which could speak to their upcoming match against the Koo Tigers. Are they gonna let these powers, these picks go through? Because when they did, it looked like, you know, they had a certain idea as to what they were gonna do with that. And it's the first time we really see that in the tournament. Really excited to somebody try it out. Well, and it speaks to a possible solution for the question we've had revolving around Champion Select and the meta as it evolves with Tom Kench now coming up to the top of things. You know, again for Fnatic though, questions around the top lane. We've seen good and bad performances from Huni, and when you go up against, you know, consistency and people who are willing to play around the top winners as well, can he stay away from that tilting form? Yeah, well, the thing about Huni and what actually I kind of respect about him is he will play his lane the same way, and that's why Rainover's ganks are really successful because you can speak as a uh, jungler, Crumbs, but when your laner gives it away, right? Like, you, he's a passive laner, yeah. then he goes aggressive, he gives it away. Huni's just always this, like, maniac in the top lane, and that's why I actually think Rainover's been so successful this tournament because you have no idea whether they're diving you together or Huni's just going by himself. Absolutely. That aggression is something that is very very difficult to read as an opponent as well. I was like, is he baiting me? Like, do they have wars? But I swept everything. I have no idea how they see me. And it's a fantastic way to play. But I think an interesting thing for the matchup is also the Shen support that help so much in the 1v1 top side with these crazy picks like Riven into Fiora, who I'm certain we're gonna see. Whoever gets that Shen pick in the support lane will automatically win that 2v2, that 1v1 uh, in the and top lane. And if lane. you can force the other mid laner to not take teleport, so your mid laner has a teleport, because I feel that if you get forbidden on a cleanse mid laner, you can really try and bully uh, Huni with yeah. that second TP. Yeah, I also do want to hit on Reckless, because we hit on Niels as being, you know, a carry, AD carry. Reckless has filled in whatever role his team has needed. He's really come into his own in this World Championship, but playing the cannon, playing the team fight, AD carry in the Sivir, whatever he needed, but also being able to stretch to those carry to those carry roles. Now I want to contrast all these teams with the series that we had today. Koo versus KT, the 3-1. As we said, Smeb came up really huge for the team right here on your screen, playing that Fiora so well. Yeah, and I think Zyrene made the first comparison between Fiora and Riven and how similar the champions are in the mechanical, I guess, uh, skill that you need to play them. And Smeb's always been one of the best Riven players in the world. To see him go berserk on uh, a champion like Fiora was like very impressive to watch, but I don't think very surprising to many people. I think a big credit for the coup win has to be the coaching staff in really deciding these stellar drafts and with the exception of the first game, really understanding how the team compositions ought to be played, especially into what KT was haphazardly throwing together and calling it a team composition. But uh, that, that just speaks to what we thought about Kuda. They're a team that knows how to counter somebody's strategy. They know what you're going to pick, and they're just going to pick around it and pick perfectly into it and just dismantle teams. And we really saw KT just lost. They had no idea what to do. This is not the team we saw in the group stage, and Koo really showed it to them. Yeah, and I have a couple of things about this match. Uh, the last time they played, it was a blind pick that really upset it with the Ash Leona, which yeah. is very hard in a blind pick because you don't get to see summoner spells. Um, the second thing is that an hour seven minutes into last night's last game video, I actually predicted the winner of this, so thank you very much, Congratulations. guys. I came you, up got, with... you got one at Worlds. <laughs> well, I kept hearing about this coin guy that had a 50% chance, <laughs> so I had to get SKT and Koo to get back up to this coin dude. Uh, Oh, but Lordy. the other thing that actually I was really disappointed in, and I think a lot of people are now that they've looked at KT, is KT are a team, once they get on Summoner's Rift, perform very well. But before that, they struggle in Champion Select, like, extraordinarily. And this is like a reoccurring trend, and this is a completely different meta, and they still haven't pieced it back together. So KT have a lot of questions in the offseason of how they will finally get that under control. Yeah, I'm disappointed by KT's drafts in general today. It's tough to analyze Ku's drafts for that reason, because I don't feel like KT really pressured them in any way. You're gonna let them have Fiora four times, well then I don't really know if Ku is drafting well, they're just drafting what's winning. Well, one thing that actually really impressed me about Ku is they took the North American strategy that they completely pulled apart and the ran burrito. it in a couple the of burrito, games. Man. Like, the that <laughs> was so like amusing the to burrito. watch. Like, you already had to beat this. You had dinner. <laughs> yeah, not enough, enough, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, those are the quarterfinals out of the way. This gives us our four semi final teams. Now let's take an opportunity to preview those matchups. Of course, first up on Saturday, we're going to have Origin versus SKT, and then Sunday, we're going to follow that with Fnatic versus the Koo Tigers. Let's start with that Origin versus SKT matchup. 
definitely SKT has to be favored here. 9-0, undefeated still at Worlds. Yeah. Absolutely, but Origin seems to be, in my opinion, the team that can actually take a game off them with a bit of a wonky pick. You know, a Nivea, pretty powerful champion, and a lot of teams don't have experience playing against it. As we saw, Flash was trying to fight in corridors and then jungle fights. When you play against that champion, the jungle does not belong to you anymore. You need to fight only very specific windows. So unless SKT is willing to ban that out and see what else Xpeka has to... On the flip side, though, you've got Rise for Faker. So you talk about picks that no one else is really playing at Worlds in the mid lane. It's like, well, okay, you got Anivia, but we've got the Rise. I mean, there's the the diversity in the mid lane alone, just across this entire Worlds tournament, has been massive. So you have to assume too, having seen the Anivia for a couple weeks now, they've got some kind of strategy. Absolutely, advice. I'm just starting the argument with what I think Origin has a chance of actually taking a game off at least because they're. Underdogs, no doubt, but if I'm looking at one guy, it's going to be Niels. Niels, to me, is the guy that's going to take one, maybe even two games off SKT. Such a commanding performance, particularly since SKT, they know Bang is pretty much the same caliber, but they don't let him play that way. They play, play passive, we're going to focus on the side lanes instead. Yeah, my, my big thing that I'm looking at coming into this series is a mentality. And we've spoken about it a lot about these European teams, and they have been like overall very impressive. But now you have to play a team like SKT, and can they keep it together? Like If they drop game one, do these like very resilient, especially the younger players like Reckless and Niels, as they come up against these teams, like are they able to keep it together? Do they get a little bit rattled when they have to play these absolutely mechanical freaks? Like I don't know the answer to that. And that's what really interests me, because if Niels, even if he loses this series, Series, is able to perform the way Niels is being performing, like this guy's future will just like continue to skyrocket up. They have everything to win and completely nothing to lose here. Yeah, definitely a tall order. I'm in line with you guys. I think Niels is going to be the person that they're going to have to funnel a lot of resources into in order to get wins off of SKT. Jumping ahead now to the second semifinal matchup, Fnatic versus the Koo Tigers. This one, I'm really uncertain. I, I think I would favor Fnatic here. Based off of their performance against EDG, they look to have such diversity in their strategies, their ability to play games. I would disagree with the diversity in the strategy, but I do enjoy it very much because I feel like Reckless has been going with trying to shift the meta away from the AD carry that's dishing out as much damage as possible. And sure, on the cannon and the Sivirus, the damage is also very high, but it provides a lot more utility for his team and takes a more of a, a passive role towards the team compositions, which is refreshing to see from what we are seeing in the group stage of the, the Jinx hyper carry or the Callista compositions and all but that. But that's where I'll dispute that because in the quarterfinals, we yep. saw Reckless break out of that shell in a game where it was needed. We saw him move to that Jinx. Yes, he also played the Kennen and played the, the support of champions. And then two, we saw Huni take a chance or take a take a game and carry on Riven. We saw Febivin on Victor as well as LeBlanc and roaming down, getting three kills early. You know, dealing with pawns, teleporting uh, uh, TF while still picking up kills and beating him in CS. I feel like they have enough different ways to win the game to in, ter yeah, in terms yeah, of people. Can, yeah, yeah, that is just say, fine, if you're going to target Huni, we'll funnel a composition through Febivin or through Reckless. No matter what, they will have a composition that they are comfortable with. They are that diverse. Absolutely. So, so my concern here is I actually think that the bottom lane was a losing lane in Fnatic versus EDG in a couple of the games and that they do funnel a lot into Huni and I think Huni will get ahead. My one question is, can Smeb once again play the way he did today when he was behind? Because mm -hmm. Smeb was behind in a couple of games and catches up relatively well as a carry top laner. So I think that's the biggest question. Uh, I'm not going to say that I'm going with Fnatic, even though I kind of am, because I know how EU fans feel about how bad my jinxing curse <laughs> is right now. Because I think that this yeah, is a team that... This. Yeah, this is a team that has incrementally gotten a lot better, but you can never take anything away from Koo just because of how well prepared they are. Final thoughts on Koo, Crumbs, before we head out. I think that Koo has a lot of hope in terms of the falling behind for Smed because even though he fell behind a lot and they knew that the lane was practically over, when you see a Renekton 2-0 in a lane that has killed your solo laner twice already, you kind of want to abandon that lane. But Hojin, even though he didn't get the first gank in there, he manages to find a way to just keep Smed just barely hanging in there and can always come back with the high scaling champion. So if we see him bust out another pick that can scale very well into the late game, even if he falls behind, I'm sure Xojin can find a way to just keep him in the game. Yeah, we saw what the focus put today for Sunday in the top lane, that Smed was still able to stay in it. And as Fnatic is a team that likes to put uh, resources into Huni, it bodes well for Koo that they are able to deal with that kind of a pressure. Well, 
That sets the stage for our two semifinal matches. I'm very excited to see them both. That's going to do it for us tonight on World Tonight. We'll see you all in Brussels next week. KT versus Koo Tigers. Last time we saw these guys, it was epic, and I expect it will be equally, if not more, epic today. I think they get the heal. Will oh. really now Someday pulls him in. Oh, and he gets one for one. In fact, Someday got that kill. Oh. And now KT comes in. A huge apprehend by Someday, and KT all over the Koo Tigers. KT rolls her. GG. They get a back out of the fight, got exhausted, couldn't really do anything. Double kill comes in for Curl. They're gonna tear apart KT. Game two goes to Koo Tigers. But no follow up there. Oh, oh. never mind. Unstoppable for oh. Sunday. Another nice knockup comes in. Big heal for Koo Tigers, and they will chase KT over a moment. Nice, 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 nice. Koo Tigers will take a dominating game number three. The crew did not need to oh, go back into this Oh, oh yes, not they played it dangerously. Oh, three. The double kill someday, a bit late to the party, and I think time's out for him.